Hi, in this video you'll learn about objects, instances of classes. At this point, you know that a Java program consists of classes that have related attributes and methods. Bundling related information together in this way, known as encapsulation, helps you organize your programs, manage access, and improve reusability. It also helps with hiding away complex internal processes in order to focus on higher level logic. This is known as abstraction. Programmers can now just call a class method without needing to know all of the details required to implement it. You'll learn more about these practices later in the course as you begin designing your own classes. Some of these classes that you create can be used to create objects, which are known as instances of the class. They package up many of the class's attributes and methods into a single independent data structure that can then interact with the rest of your program. You can think of these classes as the blueprint and factory for creating their specific objects. The classes have all the specifications of what information the object will contain and what actions they can perform. Each time the classes are called upon, they create new independent objects. In many cases, the attributes in each object will be values unique to the object. Take for example a rectangle class. This rectangle class defines the attributes that every rectangle object will have, width, height, color, and its behaviors, calculate area, calculate perimeter, get dimensions. This creates the blueprint, or template, to create its objects. Every time that a new rectangle object is created, the class uses this template, filling in any unique attributes as needed. A different call to the class would result in a different object with different values for its attributes. OK, now one for you to try. Here is a car class with three defined methods, get speed, accelerate, and change color. What three attributes might you want to include in the car class? Think about the data that could describe each unique instance or car object that it creates. Pause the video for a few seconds and come up with your answers. Here's one option. What about attributes that describe the model of the car, its color, and its current speed? Then, when you actually make a new instance of the class, you can send in unique values for that car object. You'll learn a lot more about creating, accessing, and using these objects in the coming lessons. Since these objects are much more complex than their primitive counterparts, they are stored and accessed a bit differently. Let's talk more about that. Take a look at the following two lines of code. On the first line, you create an int variable in order to store an integer, which is a primitive data type. On the second line, you create a string variable in order to store a string object, which is a reference data type. At first glance, these two lines of code look like they are doing the same thing, but they're actually handling these variable initializations in two very different ways. A primitive data type is a simple piece of information which is stored directly in the variable itself. An object data type, on the other hand, is not a simple singular piece of information. It can contain many different attributes and many different methods. For a variety of reasons, including memory efficiency and management, an object is not stored directly in the variable itself. Instead, the object is stored at some particular location in memory. Let's pretend 0x006 is how Java would label that location, and then the variable weather would store that location reference. Then, every time you use or access the string variable, it knows where the actual object is and points right to it. As a user or programmer, you don't necessarily see this happening, you would just see the string sunny being printed. To look at this in one other way, Imagine these cylinders are all located in the computer's memory. When the primitive variable is created, it gets stored at location 0x001, with its integer value of 7. When the string object gets created, however, due to internal memory processes, it gets stored at 0x006, and the weather variable is stored at 0x002, with the object's location reference of 0x006. Whenever the weather variable is used, 0x002 lights up and points to 0x006 so that the actual string object is being accessed and used. Now imagine you create a second string variable called weather2 and set it equal to the variable weather. Can you guess what is going to happen? The weather2 variable will get placed into memory and contain the same reference to the original string object stored at location 0x006. Both variables weather and weather2 are pointing to the same string object. Now whenever weather2 gets used, 0x003 lights up and points to 0x006 so that the actual string object is being accessed and used. 
Now it's your turn to put objects, instances of classes, into practice.